you, 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 you are now listening to Talk, 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 talk is Cheap FM. Brought to you by Bet the Tuesday. Talk is cheap, my Yo, 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 yo. Ha <laughs> ha. What's up, everybody? <laughs> How you guys doing today? This is another episode of Talk is Cheap FM. I'm your host. I'm your homeboy. I'm your uncle. I'm that dude that you fucking go to whenever you need advice or you just want somebody to speak his mind. I am Baba Tuesday. And yes, we have another caller online. I knew this dude for way back when. We used to write fucking full-length movie scripts together. We'll get into that shit. But he's on the line, patiently waited. Let's see how he's doing. Hello? Hello, hello. Hey, what's going on, dude? Chilling, man. How you doing? Man, I'm doing great. I'm doing great. Okay, so this is, I did my little intro and shit. Right, yeah. so this is your time now to introduce who you are and let just. I'm just gonna give you the floor. So here you go. All right, that's uh, that's a ballsy move because you never know where I can go with this. But uh, I'll just start with a quick introduction. My name is I am a video producer here down in Austin, Texas. I'm working for a commercial real estate firm. You know, making a lot of marketing videos, making a lot of property videos, and uh, you know, I'm a uh, I'm an entertainer at heart, I think, but, you know, I don't know. I guess that's who I am. I don't know. Okay, okay, shit, giving out your yeah. giving out your full name and shit. Do you want to give anybody your social security number or anything before we get started? That would actually be great. I, I, I'm waiting for somebody to steal my identity. So if you want it, it is yours. Please take it. Uh, it comes with debt, so just know that. Oh, hell yeah, student loans. Goddamn, I've been dodging them, but they finally caught up with me. I've been telling them since goddamn 2000 and what was it, seven that I passed away and all this shit, but they fucking hunted me down. I even changed my number to a Hawaii number, and guess what? They got my ass. I'm fucking yeah, paying I'm monthly. Gonna... I've been ducking and dodging, That's baby. Smart, I... man. She's always going to find you. Yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, unlike a baby mama, at least they give you... Do time to fucking pay your goddamn back child support and not throw you in jail. Yeah, so, so thank you, government, true, for 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 you know letting people who are in debt actually pay that shit off. Thank you very much. Goddamn. Speaking thank of you. man, I, I still got to do my goddamn taxes and oh. shit. Like a lot of people love tax season, but when you start owing the government shit, uh huh. That like uh. So people know what I'm talking about when they they make fucking money and shit and they they have to pay and all that bullshit and you you're doing your own entrepreneur shit shit's fucking crazy. But anyways, man, how's everything been going, dude? Hey man, I can't complain. Uh, the city of Austin is probably one of the best in the in America. Just kind of relaxing, enjoying well the weather right here has not been good lately, but you know we're talking about Austin, Texas. Yeah, one of the best places. yeah. Austin, Texas, it, Austin, Texas feels like fucking California to me. Like it's, 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 it's totally different. And especially when I was in college, dude, it was so, oh, you're, you're like, are you, I mean, the time when I went down there with you, I mean, just honey buns all over the place. We're acting crazy. I swear to God. And this happened to me at two places in the United States where a cop fucking was smoking weed. And that was in. Um, that was in Austin, Texas, and that was in New Orleans, and I swear to you, I, like, the cop was blowing that sticky icky, and I was like, yo, what the fuck, this shit is fucking crazy, and shit. <laughs> well, you know, uh, we, we keep it weird down here. Right? Yeah. And, uh, I I'm pretty sure in New Orleans, they just keep it wasted, so. Oh, man. That's the same thing. Yeah, this one cop was looking out for me because I almost went into the gay part of New Orleans, and apparently, like, they have, like, these street... Like, I don't know, post or whatnot. And if, and if you see like a, a rainbow flag, that means you're entering into the um, the uh, the uh, gay zone and shit. So That's I'm walking. Sign, yeah. yeah, I'm walking and shit. And then like the cop stopped me, and he was he like he like put you okay. So you know how like when you're a little kid and you're in the you're you're in the passenger seat and your mom slims on the brake and she throws her arm out there to help you out and shit. Like, oh, yeah. the co- I'm walking and shit, and the cop did that same shit to me, and he, like, pointed, and he was like, and then I looked at him, and I was like, oh, thank you. 
And uh, I, I went the opposite way. You know what I mean? And don't get me wrong. I was, um, I was living in, uh, I was shooting a wedding and I was living in the, or, or around the, the, the gay part of New Orleans and they had some of the best goddamn pizza. Like <laughs> I'll, I'll, every night I walked to the pizza place and shit and they had some fucking good ass food. You know what I mean? Just, wait, I'll say this. Uh, I don't know if you ever gone to a gay bar before but as a person that has gone to a gay bar I, I am one that definitely recommends it to anybody just having I don't know for me when I went to a gay bar it might be a unique experience but it was kind of my one little insight to what it's like to be a girl at a bar where you could just go get drinks off for you with no intention of sleeping with that person. Yeah. And it was fantastic. And I went up, I remember I had a, uh, some dude buy me two, me and my buddy, <laughs> two, the most expensive drink I could think of. I said, thank you very much. I turned right around and I started talking to another girl. And I was like, hey, does that make me a dick? Yeah, that makes me a dick. No question about that. But it also makes me something that takes advantage of the situation that I'm in. Yeah. And I thought it was great. I mean, I love the attention that I got. I love. Yo, all right, all right, all right. Um, okay, I'm gonna tell. I'm gonna tell my story. Yes, I've been to a gay bar, okay. and this is what happened. This this is the whole fucking setup. So I was working for Apple at the time, and if you if anybody knows, like Apple is really big on hiring African Americans, and um. And uh, gay people, LGBTQ, they're, they're really big on it, you know, and people are cool and shit, right? So I had a buddy there who played in a band. Band was fucking dope, right? And they got booked at this gay bar. And um, I didn't know that it was a gay bar. I didn't know that we were going, but I'm in, we're, get, we're all getting in the car. And my buddy was like, the other dude, because the band was already there. Another dude was like, all right, so roll with me and with the honeys. And he's, he was like, do you know where we're going? And I was like, nah. And he turned and looked at me uh, with a big grin on his face. And he was like, we're going to, he said the name of the place. And I didn't even know what it was. And he was like, it's a gay bar. And I was like, oh, shit. All right. So this is my first time going to a place like this. Right? So, bro, and this was, this was the, it was fucking funny. It, this shit is funny. You ready for this shit? So we walk in. Yeah. We walk in and uh, we we rolled as a big group. So there's dudes there, there's ladies there, and of course we're in a gay bar and shit. So everybody's looking at like the new fresh meat and shit. You know what I mean? And we're just all sit, we're just all just chopping it up. Like I even forgot that we were in a gay bar. You know what I mean? My back was against the wall though. I tell you that. And um, so me and my homeboy, uh, the one that the one that was like. He knew where we were going, but he didn't tell me. We're just talking and shit, and we're just joking. And I was like, hey, dude, you know what would be funny? <laughs> and he said, what? And I said, if a fight broke out in here. And we started busting out laughing, right? Because And we kind of did like the like the hand slap, like the CC slapping and shit. And we're just fucking, cr we're fucking cracking up. And it was just me and him. But some dude was eardropping, dude. Some dude was like, if there was a fight, he was, he, he, I heard him, I heard him from, uh, he was on the left hand, no, yeah, he was on the left hand side, and he was like, if there's a fight, I'm definitely fighting in it, right? So, I turn and I look at him, dude, this dude was a goddamn power lifter or something, this dude was fucking like big, like a fucking, like a, a goddamn Russian bear, right? So, I forgot where I was at, and you know, I'm not a confrontational person or anything. I am not, but it, it was either fight or flight. Like seriously, like he, like, like the tone and how he did it was like, yo, this shit is about to happen. So like everybody now is looking at me, right? So I was like, yo, like nobody was even talking to you. Like just mind your business, dude. Just mind your business, right? And my friend who was uh, who, he's he's gay and he worked at Apple. Like he he got. Like in between us, right? He was, I guess, the 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 homosexual mediator or whatnot, and he just basically just grabbed me, 
uh, and said, D dude, just like, just, just come with us. We're about to leave anyways, just talking to the crowd or whatnot. So I'm already heated, right? And we're, they're talking and shit and I'm ready to fucking go now, you know, yeah. um, fuck the free drinks. Right. So then I kind of like break away from the crowd and I'm just like, almost kind of back where I was at back against the wall. Just like minding my own fucking business, dude. I swear to you, my own, my own goddamn business pissed off waiting for everybody to like, let's, let's just fucking go. Let's listen to the band. Let's go. This the same dude, bro, comes back up to me, right? Fucking did a goddamn 180 and is the nicest dude ever. And he was like, dude, he was like, dude, I'm sorry, blase, blase. Like, forgive me and shit. And I'm just like, dude, just like get away from me. My friend comes back, gets me and tells me like, dude, that dude was hitting on you. He was testing you. And I was like, what? Dude, I fucking yeah. left. I fucking left. I was like, dude, I can't fucking deal with this shit. What the fuck is going on? Shit. So that's my goddamn story. I was like, yo. Like, you're testing me, like, and I stood up to you, so that turned you on, dude? Oh, come on, man. Come on, dude. Come on. Get the... F hey, uh. But at the same time, though, to be fair, though, I mean, if you had this just fucking big girl just, you know, talking to you, and she kind of just gives you a little, like, mm, like, stand up to you, you're going to be like, damn, that's, that's pretty sexy. Uh, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I'll be like, damn, she got a backbone and shit. Let me see how that feels. But uh, it was you just something. It was. To. I mean, if, if, you, if you can stand up in real life, you can stand up in the bedroom. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. But like, like, I mean, people can do what the fuck they want to do. But I mean, like, I was already uncomfortable. And I'm not, I'm not like a homophobe yeah. or anything like that. But it was just an uncomfortable environment. You know what I mean? I was just like, shit, yeah. like. Uh, I mean, it is what it is, and um, it just like actually the end of last year. I mean, I did a um, like a marketing photo. Sh I did a, a video marketing shoot for a um, for an LGBTQ uh, like marketing community or whatnot. But went there, did videos and shot pictures, and I was mad comfortable there. But at the same time. Because have you ever been to like a um, like a seminar or like a business seminar out of town and shit? Have you ever been to one of those? Numerous times. Usually, I'm filming them, um, but I've been to them as a spectator. They're yeah, you know, they're not funny yeah. away. Yeah. So, but you know that at the end of like the seminar, people are ready. People are already eyeing each other, looking to see who the who, oh, who's yeah. going to fuck. So. Me and because I've been to a lot of seminars and shit. Me walking into one like this, I just knew. Like I, I, I just, I just saw the goddamn manner is. I just saw what's happening. I saw who was plotting and everything like that. And I'm just like, man, this shit is fucking crazy, man. This shit is fucking crazy. Fuck. It's its own little drama, you know. Yeah. It can be kind of entertaining if you can get the right position to kind of watch it all happen. Yeah. <sighs> goddamn. But I. Uh, like that whole that whole um gay bar scene should be in a fucking movie. I'm telling you that shit was fucking dope and like I can laugh about it now but at the like it just took me a long time to get my just to wrap my head around like like man this is this is some fucking crazy ass shit, dude. Just All right. Fuck. Well, as as the host, I'm going to let you make this call right here. I don't know if you want this to turn into the uh Let's swap gay bar stories, but I, I mean, mid story, I, I thought about my most epic of all gay stories. Oh, shit. Gay bar stories. All right, what's up? All right, all right. So let's set the scene. Let's set the scene a little bit. This is about 10 years ago. Uh, I was, well, probably about 12 years ago. I was fresh out of college, still trying to make some money, uh, waiting tables at the time, trying to kind of work my way up as a video producer and all that stuff. So Wait. I want to freelance. Are you living in Austin at the time? I'm living in Austin at the time. This is my first time staying in Austin. Um, this is my first time I didn't make any money, you know. Oh uh, shit! <laughs> and, and, and so, so we could just come back. Me and my buddy could just come back from this this epic trip to New Orleans, uh, where we kind of just went to New Orleans on a whim. We had a buddy with some cash and just kind of took us there. We stopped by a, a thrift store on the way there, picked up some suits. And we kind of balled out that way. And I'm telling you, if you ever want to go to New Orleans, 
buy yourself a suit or wear a suit because it is a different story. But so kind of that same mentality, we kind of get into this like dancing mode. We have a friend who's got a birthday, so me and my buddy give her a little strip tease. Um, and like a little, a little backstory. This is I'm I, I'm kind of regretting getting my full name at the beginning of this this interview right now. But, uh, I can I can uh, I can bleep it out. I kind of that's a very amateurish history in stripping. From when I was turned 19, I did the 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 amateur night at the local strip club in, in Oklahoma, which was an interesting story in itself. Oh. And, uh, you know, got, got freelance here and there to do stupid stuff. Yo, 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 before you continue, before you continue, I got to ask you this. You were there okay. in, you, you were there in high school where we went to that one. I was. Oh, my God. Yo, yeah. I am going to tell my grandkids yeah, about that. My birthday, we got a couple strippers ordered for a group of us. Uh, a lot of people on the football team, actually. Yeah. They went to school. Yeah, it, it was fucking crazy. Guys, just imagine, like, fucking... Dude, and I think it was illegal because some of us were, like... Some of them were, like, 16 and 15, but... Oh, I was, I'm not going to... I don't... I don't know if I should say, but I was definitely 16 at the time. Yeah, so, so this is crazy. So we're in high school, right? And we, we got a, we got a fucking badass football team. Like, we're fucking going to state or whatnot. We're fucking tearing shit up, right? So basically, I, 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 the practice squad. There, there was, the there, 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 but you was cool as shit though, bro. Yeah, but, that's um, true. But it was somebody's birthday, I believe, and somebody organized something where we go to this dude's apartment. This dude had, like, two badass strippers. One of the strippers got ran through by a teammate's older brother, which is it's just fucking crazy. Yeah. But, um, um, so I remember we knocked on this door. This big-ass buff, like, black dude with, like, a goddamn helmet on opens the door, and he was like, hey, everybody, come in. And we pay him the money, and the next thing you know, like, five minutes later, these bad chicks go into the door, go into his room, get ready, turn on the lights, turn off the lights, turn on the black lights, and just imagine goddamn 15, 16, 17, and 18-year-olds just with, like, two strippers. And just... and then, Is this... Can we get in trouble if I... Am I I don't even listen. Let's stop right there. No, we got we got away with that shit. No, I'm just saying now, like us telling it, like I don't want to fucking listen. It, listen, goddamn it, it the shit was fucking crazy, and it, and it was at that well, moment. I got a fake name at the beginning of this this conversation. But so, I what I one looked this up. It ain't me. What I'll do is I'll I'll fucking bleep it out or some shit, yo. But the shit was fucking crazy. Um, My biggest memory from that situation was uh, there were bananas involved in the whole. Holy uh, shit! Uh, I fucking we'll call it entertainment, dude. And, uh, dude, it's a very okay, okay. It's a very sexy thing. I, I can see that, but it's also something that has a very distinct smell, and that is my 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 distinct memory from that is who got the who 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 got the banana like I. I can't even say names, but yes, bananas and I believe whipped cream. And now that I think I, about I it, now that I think about it, that shit was fucking like if the cops would have came in and that shit would have blew up the newspaper. Oh, that shit would have been crazy. But whoever organized that, I want to thank you for the bottom of my heart. And like, I forgot about it for the longest, but just now talking to you, bro, um, that shit was fucking crazy. That was a crazy experience for mm-hmm. a 16, 17 year old. Yeah, with yeah. Like, I think one or two 18 year olds. And thing. dude, dude, senior, just think about the senior in high school, right? I used to go to the strip club where we used to live just to have lunch. Shit was crazy. They had a great steak. Shit was. It was actually the place where I did my first amateur uh, game. <laughs> Uh, I, say, I, I called myself uh, Katie Pat My Ass. My <laughs> stage name. I went down the song. I'm not afraid to admit that. I went down the song, and it was not the right move to do, but I did it. You, you're fucking crazy, dude. Oh, shit. You're fucking crazy. This brings me back, this brings me back to my story. So, as you can see, my quarrels with um, uh, the exotic entertainment, for lack of better word. Uh, that is the best way, I suppose. Um, it is very loose. So, I get home. 
home. I'm, I'm in bed with about eight hours. I'm real tired. And a buddy of mine that I'm living with, he sends me a text message. And he's like, yo, there's a strip tease contest happening at this bar. You need to come and win this shit. $125 prize for the winner. I was like, boom, done and done. Like, I need money. And so what better motivator to take off your clothes than I need for money? You know what I'm saying? Um, so how so much? $125. Got to make some money. You know, got to make some dollars. And so, of course, I throw on my suit, my best suit, which cost me $12 at the thrift store outside of New Orleans. And uh, I'm just like, yo, all right, sign me up. I want my song to be, um, uh, what was my song? It was uh, uh, All the Single Ladies. Or my song to be All the Single Ladies. I was like, man, this is going to be a room full of, you know, 30, 40 year old ladies. So I want about to rock this. Like, I, I can put on a show. I'll give myself that. So I get there. I, I show up. Um, I'm not going to name the name of the bar because it is a local. I don't know if it's still around, but it was a place. And. Uh, I walk into the bar, I'm like, cool, let's get me a drink, let's loosen up a little bit. And there's just kind of this weird vibe to the bar. I don't really know it's anything at first, get my drink. A uh, nice dude gives, gives me, a nice bartender gives me the, the drink. I'm looking around, and that's when it starts to kick in. Like, there is several <laughs> dudes at this bar. Yeah. So right at that moment, it starts to kick in where I'm at. And it is a local gay bar. And, um... And that's about the same time that my friend sees me. I think he sees me also piecing this together. Because he's got a sh huge shitting grin on his face. But he realizes that I just realized what he did. But, in the pro that I am, I'm not going to let something like that stop me from making that money. Um, so I walk up to him. I said, there's a gay bar, isn't it? And he's like, yes, it is. Like, that's hilarious. Well done. Change my song from All the Single Ladies to Raining Men, and let's do this. <laughs> you fucking crazy. Dude, dude, hey, just to let the audience know, this dude is like Johnny Knoxville and all those motherfuckers mixed into one if they could also do stand up. Like, this dude, this dude is fucking <laughs> crazy. All right, all right, continue. Like so, um, uh, song comes on, I do my thing, so one of my signature moves is I, I hit the warm-up, uh, the crowd fucking loves the warm, but the secret I had that I think really made me stand out amongst the other dancers was um, about a year and a half before, prior to this dancing incident, my sister had given me as a gift from her trip to Italy a pair of boxer briefs that were of the middle section of the Statue of David, so you can kind of picture what that is. And so I had decided what a great idea to wear those that night and that would be what I shipped down to, which of course I did do this and the crowd went crazy. It was amazing. <laughs> God damn, that's fucking crazy. That should be in a goddamn movie too. That should be in the fucking well, movie. It says it in there. I would love to say it ends there. Like, oh shit. What the competition, I took my money and I was Held up, uh, no, I wish, I wish that was the end of the story. I did win the competition, and I did put on my clothes, and I said, fuck uh, yeah, I just won this, this, I am awesome, give me my money, and that's when the dark side of the business comes in. Holy that's shit. That's when the, uh, DJ came up to me, he's like, yeah, you're gonna get your money, but the catch is, to get your money, you gotta go to the side stage and dance for another 45 minutes by yourself on this stage, in which I was like, okay, whatever, I got the suit on. He's like, yeah, you can't wear that suit. So I just stripped back oh down. Oh my God, my what? Box of at the middle section of the Statue of David, showing what he shows. And I'm not gonna lie, I might have had a little uh, sock love going on. But that was the that was the end moment of my game career. But that 45 minutes of just sheer questioning a lot of decisions of your life like you're like super drunk and you're sitting here like dancing half naked for a bunch of strangers you're like all right you know what i i should go back to school <laughs> Okay, okay. Let me, let me just let me put this in perspective for everybody. Listen to this shit. So for uh, what's that? One hundred twenty-five bucks. I, I want to say it was one hundred and 
walked out with tips because I got some tips on the side table. I probably walked out with 180 bucks. 180 Thanks. bucks for about 50 minutes. Prostitutes don't even make that much money, bro. And it just goes to show you, it just goes to show you that females out there, if you throw them a couple of dollars, they'll do shit for peanuts. That's all I'm, that's all I'm saying. Like, shit is really crazy out here. People will do a lot of shit for money. That, Pat, I mean, damn, I said your goddamn, well, I, fuck, listen, dude, I said my name, it's okay. dude. I, I can't even believe this shit. I can't believe... I can't... 45 minutes. God damn. 45 minutes. I'm on myself. That was... That was a little I, rough. Like, I... Were you, like... Were you depressed? Like, did you fucking, like, burn all your clothes and, like, cry in the shower, like, in that one scene of uh, Ace Ventura? A little bit. I like to think I've been slowly crying for the last 15 years in the shower and, uh, kind of a daily little suction cup with, with the, uh... Plunger from my bathroom. Yeah, I mean it's not a big deal. It's definitely gonna affect me long term, right? 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 <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't. I, dude, this is a, this is some fucking crazy shit. Uh, uh, well, I don't know where this episode's supposed to go, but uh, I'm just gonna stick yeah. forever. I got I got crazy shit all over the place. Yeah, it's yeah. Uh, well, anyways, th- speaking of crazy shit, so check this out. Okay. So I had to take a shit before we did this, right? So I took a shit, and that's why I said I was going to call you back in four minutes, but it was about seven minutes. But I, was, I took a shit, and I realized, oh, shit, I forgot to get toilet paper this morning when I was out at the gym and shit. So I fucking, with fucking post shit, not flush or anything, not wipe, I fucking walk into my kitchen to get um, my Kleenex. So I got some Kleenex. And it's uh, Puffs Lotion Kleenex. So that it's real soft. And it has fucking... It's my first time using it. But it's goddamn... It feels like a goddamn Amatis cloud, right? So I think that I'm going to start using these fucking lotion Kleenexes every time I take a shit. So there's a tip for you guys. I know a lot of people use baby wipes. But goddamn, listen. These goddamn Puff Lotion uh, Kleenex. Whoo! It does. It does its duty. They have, I wipe my ass with those, and they are legit. So you gotta be careful because they don't flush well. Oh. And so you want to be throwing away shit-ridden Kleenex into your bath or into your trash can? Well, I, I only use two because they're kind of expensive. I didn't use like a goddamn handful or whatnot. So I was thinking, you know, ahead, not to fucking fuck shit up and plus yeah, save yeah, money. That's what I'm about. Yeah. But shit, man, goddamn, like, I don't even know what I am going to call this goddamn episode. This this is well, some crazy some opinion shit. shit. Well, I feel like giving this an opinion. Like, what do you want to know about? Like, I got, I got, like, I'm a wise kind of dude, you know? So I got, I got information to give to your audience. Um, okay. Uh, talk about how people market themselves on social media like how how you come like when you oh no 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 fuck that tell me have you ever followed somebody on social media and you slowly see them fucking hit the wall and just do a goddamn 180 and just fucking just just turn into a complete different person like within years are you talking about just in general on social just, media yeah just in general like complications just in general, just in general. Like, I follow random oh, people I, on Instagram, and I see, like, females just fucking do, like, you know, no kids, you know, blase, blase, to fucking they puffing out, like, two kids. Their whole demeanor changed. They used to be goddamn listening to goddamn heavy metal. Now they're listening to church music. It's just crazy. Well, I think that just comes with kind of that transition of our age. You kind of see... It's, it's kind of an interesting time because you see those girls that, let's just call them more promiscuous, you know, that, that had their reputations back in high school. They kind of start families. You're like, oh, damn, okay, that's cool. And then you kind of see people that are like, you know, hardcore, whatever it is, like their, their perception from high school, they have this hardcore, like heavy metal mentality or they're this like anti-everything person, this punk rocker. And you kind of, you're starting to, we're starting to hit that age and I'm in 30s where... 
uh, a lot of that is starting to fall to the wayside. And people are like, I'm just starting to fail. I'm just starting to become this normal person. It is kind of weird because I definitely was one of those people and I've made that shift. I'm just like, man, I don't, I don't got the energy to, to protest some shit that I would normally be angry about or just, I don't know, it's just this weird transition of people. I don't know. I think it's a lot of that is how much bullshit is in high school and who you are in high school. And I think you can learn a lot, but man, there's a lot of bullshit because you still get wrapped up in clicks. You still get wrapped up in how you think you should act to around this certain group of people because you have this whole persona that you think you need to have. I think part of that is just kind of letting go of some of that. But part of it is kind of. I don't know. I mean, that idea of having kids, that changes you. I've already seen but you know what? friends of mine who I uh, got had kids for two years. Totally changed your perspective on everything. Oh, yeah. I think I think once you have, because I don't have no children, but I think once you have a ch- child or children, your, your whole perspective changed. You might put now put on your goddamn seatbelt when you're driving, and you might not go out as much because motherfuckers is crazy and, and shit like that. But what I do like, especially if, like, if we're talking about from high school to now, is seeing a female, if she was rig- originally like a hoe in high school and she still like does the same thing, and I'm just like, you're being consistent and um, yeah. that Thank is fucking you awesome. living up to the expectations that we had set upon you 15, 20 years ago. I appreciate that. Or, or if you see like... Uh-huh. Or if you see, like, dudes who just fucking, it just looks like they fucking gave up on life and shit. You're just like, fuck. Shit. See, that's what I'm trying to do myself. I mean, I like to think that people saw me in high school and were like, that dude's going to strip randomly at a gay bar someday for not enough money and way too much dancing. And I like to think that I kind of fulfilled some people's dreams by doing that, you know? <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> goddamn, like... Like in the yearbook, like when you're your senior year or whatnot, did you like win best something? I was not in my senior yearbook. I was like the apples. What the fuck happened? I moved to Houston uh. my junior year, got to Houston, but when I got to Houston, this is, um, I was wanting to the whole time move back to said city in which we grew up in. Yeah. Um, and uh, I did not get that chance, and so it was just never took those senior pictures because I thought they were stupid. Yeah, uh, yeah. And my mom wanted me to dress in a way. I was like, I don't want to dress that way because I wasn't a guy that wore suits or wore polos or anything like that. I was kind of my own person. I yeah, no, like I, I like I could say that you were your own person. And I and I and I was too, and I think that's why we clicked up. And in the beginning of this, yeah. you didn't hear like my little intro. Like I told the 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 the, the uh, listeners that um, we wrote like scripts together. And mm-hmm. you remember our first script that we wrote? Um, is it the is it the cooking show, the sexy cooking show? No, the no the not 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 the not the uh, TV show. Oh, we wrote TV shows too. No, not the cooking show, oh, but. TV Huh? Oh yeah, yeah. We fucking did. We fucking had. We had a legit TV show that wasn't. It wasn't one of those public access shit. No, it was actually on cable and shit. <laughs> Dude, we fucking accomplished a lot and got them. It was a very weird show. <laughs> it was so fucking funny to me, dude. I still go on YouTube and just watch it, and I just fucking crack up, dude. Um, I did too. I did too. Um, no, like you remember El Vareno? Oh my god, I forgot about that. <laughs> that was our fucking first fucking movie. I I found the script. I found that script, found I believe. Script? Yes, yes, it's um actually, actually it's on the it's on this uh, laptop that I'm recording on right now. Hi folks, we'll get ready. Dude, to, uh, dude, dude we need a we need to beef one it of up. The worst written movies of all time come to fruition. Because all we did was get better at our skill sets. And now we're adults with really good skill sets. And now you're going to see really, really stupid <laughs> writing from 19-year-olds to be filmed, hopefully, by semi-professionals. That makes it look decent, you know? Yeah, dude. I'm excited. 
Um, yeah, I'll, I'll fucking email it to you. I gotta, I gotta fucking find it. It's on one of my hard drives. Um, if it's not on this, uh, on this laptop, but, um, yeah, we wrote that in like a week or maybe even like, dude, what I remember it. No, nah, I think we wrote it in like four days, that four to five days. Hard with us, man. Oh my God. Dude, we were listening to modest mouse and writing this script yeah. like fucking for four days wow. straight. Dude, I would fucking leave your crib, go home, fucking work, go to school. We would meet back up at your crib and just fucking write, laugh, just fucking. You're the only person I, I like bounced off ideas that like you never really like, like, um, like thought an idea was stupid. You know, um, it's comedy. I think every idea, if the stupider it is, there, there's comedy in there. Yeah. Funny and everything, you just gotta find what it is that's like, oh shit, that's what we're saying. Yeah, so, um, um, yeah, I'm gonna see if I can hunt that down. Maybe it's in like one of my old Yahoo emails too, that's where I found it. But shit, man, uh, if you got an opinion on how we think, how you think we should make this movie, please leave it in the comments below because we want to hear your opinion. Yeah, we first. First, what what we need to do is we need to do an episode where, after we look it over, we need to discuss it, and then then have the audience fucking leave fucking suggestions, and then we fucking just do it, man. Because like we now we have the equipment, the techniques, and and everything is so accessible. We 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 can find locations and all and everything like that. You know, well, we have the technology. We can rebuild them. Yeah. Six yeah. million dollar man. Come on, folks. Come yeah. on. That's, yeah. that's obscure. I'm sorry. It, it, pretty much. Hopefully, people got that. It didn't go over <laughs> people's heads. <laughs> I don't think they did. Uh, okay, I want to tell a quick, quick. I don't know if you remember this. It's just it's a quick story for your listeners about the history of uh, Bobby Tuesday and myself. But I had an apartment in college, and he decided to come over one day to kind of get some stuff for a video that we were working on. And he thought it'd be hilarious while I lived in my apartment complex to uh, lock my door so I couldn't get back into it and turn on a uh, adult movie <laughs> on absolute full volume. Wait. That was a good hour and a half long. Wait. Everybody could wait. hear that in my apartment complex. Wait, wait, wait. What the fuck did I do? Yeah, you did that. I, wait, wait, wait. I blocked you in. What? On my like computer at full volume, which I had pretty good speakers, so that thing was glaring. <laughs> and then you left. <laughs> and it was a good hour, hour and a half before I did it. <laughs> I'm like, well, that's a weird noise coming out of somebody's apartment. <laughs> I was an asshole. I was an asshole back then. Yo, I, I, I was like, a, like I wasn't a bully. I was just an asshole. But so you're telling me that you get? Did you give me the keys to your place? I gave the keys to my place like a fucking idiot. You gave me the keys to your place. So, and I, I can barely remember this, but I'm gonna kind of walk through it, you know, because I know what I would do. Yeah. So, I get there. I fucking was I picking up like equipment or clothes or some shit. So I think equipment or clothes or something that we were doing for the TV show. Yeah, and was was your porn on your computer that was connected to your stereo system? Of course, my porn was on my computer that was connected to my stereo system. So because I also listened to my house, but in a reasonable tone, in which my neighbors <laughs> ideally couldn't hear. Um, so I fucking blessed that shit. I fucking leave, lock the door, probably gave you back the keys, and you probably show up late at night and shit. <laughs> yeah, this was, we're talking like hours and weeks. And it was like one of those, like, I guess a playlist or something. So when one ended, the next one began. And it wasn't like. God damn. Yes, damn. I, I, this is the person you're listening to, folks. This is the person that you're putting your face into. <laughs> that shit is fucking crazy, man. I can't believe I, I God damn. Any more stories that, that you can remember before we uh before we bounce out of here? Um there's a cell 
Coffee. I, I did a, a, I shot a rap video in St. Louis, and a lot of the the shots were green screens of girls shaking their real oh, yeah. tail feathers, if you will. And uh, there's definitely, there's, it's not a great story, but it's a great photo if you can ever find it. Um, well, you got a nice selfie of you in front of my computer screen with this girl just shaking. Yeah, smiling. I remember that because I went down to Austin with my, my other homeboy because we're shooting for... Um, for I believe we're shooting for the History Channel or mm -hmm. or yeah, something, something like that. that. Yeah, and uh, what I remember about that trip was is a lot of things. I remember that. I remember this. You you you're the first person to introduce me to um, when thumbnails move on porn sites because you were like, yeah, you can watch oh, like thumbnails yeah. and shit. And I was like, I didn't know what the fuck you were talking about. And you showed me. I was like, okay, cool. I remember that. I remember like us going to like this. Game changer. Yeah, I remember us going to this restaurant and we ordered like so many chicken wings or some shit. And I brought some chicken wings over to you or some shit like that. Um, yeah. Yo, that was during um, the uh, Irish. That was that was during uh, uh, Irish Day. What's what what day is that? Uh, St. Patrick's Day. Wow, that is offensive. That is I'm sorry. Irish I'm sorry. Uh, he yeah. is Irish, everybody. My bad. No, yeah, but uh, as a, as a society, listen, I I baked some um, potatoes uh, today, and they're they're fucking tasty. Um, just okay, let you know. Well, that's fair. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, and I remember, uh, I remember like going around, and and we're in Austin, of course, and ladies are. They 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 are very lovable in Austin and just going around just macking That's the chicks, cool. taking photos, like making out with the chicks. It was fucking crazy. It was unbelievable. It was unbelievable. Yeah, it was a weekend. Go it, really. It, yeah, it was fucking incredible. All right, so we're about to close this shit out. Um, before I close it out, uh, do you have anything to say to the listeners? Yes, I actually got a lot to say to the listeners. See, here's what you got to understand. Is when you go around life and you think that, hey, you know what? This chicken in the woods is just kind of acting like a bear. You got to remember that it's actually uh, an anteater. Are you high? Right? Are you high right now? <laughs> <laughs> oh shit damn i thought you was about to say something goddamn I, I, you know what maybe you said something so goddamn uh profound that i am not going to realize what you said until like 15 years from now and then randomly 15, 17 years you call me back like holy shit yeah you just saw life yeah <laughs> what I'm here for. You know, that's what I do, man. It's not, it's not God damn. It's like I said, I'm a wise man. Yo, everybody, uh, I'm going to close this shit out like how I always close it. One, thank you for um, listening to this. Um, like, comment, subscribe. Um, teach people how to treat you. Sometimes you have to re-teach people how to treat you. And just like how my grandma still tells me to this day, I, one, uh, by the way, I love you, Grandma. She used to tell me, um, love everybody, but trust no one. I am your host, Baba Tuesday, and we are out. Peace. <laughs>